Hey everybody, it's Peter, and today we're gonna have some fun. This is the 2023 KTM Duke 890R. This is the step up from the 790, and this, as KTM describes it on their website, is turning the 790 up to 11. So we're gonna talk about that, if it's just marketing speak or if it's real stuff. And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty impressed with some of the stuff I see on this bike. The components tell you a lot, and in this video review, we are gonna go through the details of this bike to try to show you some of the things that the other videos aren't showing. Showing you. So if I don't cover everything that you want to cover in this video, make sure you let me know in the comments section because I can come back to this bike. I'm here filming at McLean Sports and they give me complete access to their entire product line. So if you have a question, I can answer it not just in the comment section, but in future videos and that's what I'll do. So make sure you give this video a like to let McLean's know that you appreciate me having their, uh, their uh, product line available to you guys and uh, make sure you subscribe because again, we're going to have more KTM, more Suzuki, more Yamaha, more all kinds of stuff and that's just here at McLean's. We film all around here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. There are all kinds of brands on this channel now, so uh, make sure you subscribe if you're interested in any of this stuff. Now, let's get going with this review. All right, so I've been involved in marketing for a very long time, and one of the first things I learned before I even knew I was going to be involved in marketing was in a high school class that there are all kinds of marketing terms that mean absolutely nothing. So when KTM says they're going to turn this up to 11, what does that mean? means nothing. It means, doesn't mean it's better or worse than anything else. So what we're going to do is examine exactly what this is. Now this is the 790 engine, but it is both bored out and stroked out and has a higher compression ratio to make more power. So what that means is wider and bigger cylinders that travel a further distance with a higher compression ratio. And that creates a situation where you have an 890cc bike, give or take, that is something that is more powerful than my four-cylinder 950 cc bike and that is pretty impressive because this is only a parallel twin so even though the power numbers don't seem crazy impressive for the displacement when you realize they're getting that out of two cylinders that changes exactly what this bike is because now this is a compact bike in every direction it feels like a much smaller bike than it is and it gives you great power and it is all about playfulness and that is what this is but to have that playfulness and be safe and have fun, you really need good quality components. And this thing is loaded with details and features that you would not expect in something of this price point and just generally something in this class. This is a real class leader when you go through a spec sheet. So let's start looking through. We're gonna go from front to back. We're gonna work our way back to the dash. But I, before we do all that, let's just show you what it looks like to sit on this bike because the seating position is also heavily revised from the 790 that this is based on. So let's bring the camera back around here. I'll show you what it looks like with me on it. We'll talk about that seating position, why it is what it is, and then we'll start going through the specs. All right, in general, naked bikes are fairly low to the ground, fairly approachable. This one's a little bit different. This one's a little bit taller. So let me just jump across it and we'll talk about some differences in seating position. So first of all, kind of a wide rear seat at the back here, but very narrow through the tank here. And when I sit forward, you can easily, I'll put the kickstand out of my way. I can very easily flat foot this or just almost easily flat foot this. So I'm a little bit of a stretch to flat foot this, but I'm about six feet tall. And if you are a little bit taller, you're gonna have no issues with this. Now the, the seating position on this pulls you a little bit forward. And to me, it actually pulls your handlebars a little bit closer. So this is a wheelie bike. This is a bike that is gonna be easy to bring up that front end if you want. If you don't want to, you've got the traction control settings that are gonna keep you in place. Now, the other thing worth talking about is the, the foot position here. So the reason the seat is high is because they wanna put the pegs high. The reason the pegs are high is because they wanna give you ground clearance for cornering. This is a naked bike that you can take to the racetrack and drag your knees the same way as the race bikes can. No issues at all. So raising those pegs means you need to raise the seat just to get a little bit of comfort. Raising the seat, bring the handlebars in close. You can lean over this and get in a full tuck position. You can wheelie this because it's nice and close to you, nice and compact position. And again, because it's a twin cylinder, not a four cylinder, the bike itself is narrow and you've got a really narrow area back here. Now, when I say it's wider in the back, what's cool about this is you can create some comfort. You can move around quite a bit on this bike and get comfortable. So this is a little bit more, you know, maybe a forward lean, but a little bit more relaxing of the leg. This is a little bit more upright, but a little tighter in the leg. So you can really move around. The seat is quite large on this, uh, firm, which is what you want, but nice and wide as well. So again, pretty decent comfort, but this isn't designed to be comfort first. This is designed to be performance first, and it really puts you in a position to have that performance seating position. So there we go, I'll just show you again here, foot on the peg, that's about what you look like, out to the brake, back to the peg. Simple stuff. Again, a little bit of forward lean because it's a little bit closer to a race bike than a traditional upright naked bike. Now let's dig, start digging through the features and details as we move, move through this bike, and then we'll come into the dash, put it all together, and talk about who it's for. 
All right, if you've seen my reviews before, I always tell you to take a look at the front wheel of the bike to really get a sense of who this was designed for and what this was designed to do. And this one is definitely no exception. So what you have here is let's just start with the tires. A lot of bikes in this class will have a Dunlop Road Sport 2 tire. That's a pretty common uh, tire in this. These are Michelin Power Cup tires. These are far more aggressive, far more sticky. So right away, you've got something that you can take to the track, something that is a lot more aggressive of a tire compared to what you see in this price class. Then you throw on that you get Brembo brakes here and good ones. Uh, radial mount, of course, large diameter. I think they're uh, 31, so 310 millimeter, I believe. Uh, they're certainly uh, quite large on this. Uh, orange painted wheels, you can see the really lightweight spokes in here. So right away, you can see that this is sort of designed for lightweight, designed for some strength, obviously, and designed for performance. You've got the upside down forks here, which are really large here um, you know you can sort of sense that right off the bat so right off the bat you get a sense that this is performance oriented the other thing is the compactness of the overall design and what that's going to do is give you a little bit more immediate steering you've got a little bit more steering angle here you can see they have a curved radiator that allows the front wheel to sit a little bit closer to that uh, radiator to again have that compact design that's where you see something that is a little more capable of wheeling as opposed to something like a Hayabusa which is really designed for straight line performance speed so going to have dirty quick handling it's going to have have the fun ability to wheelie if you want to and that more compact uh, style for that really aggressive um, quick turning type bike so that's what you see in the front here but let's move up a little further because it actually has a few more components worth pointing out a little higher up all right, we've moved up those upside down forks here. So again, upside down forks are gonna give you lower unsprung weight at the wheel. They're gonna give you more stiffness up here, but there's a few more things worth pointing out. First of all, look at the frame design here. You've got these circles in here. Those circles are designed for a couple things. First of all, strength. That gives you extra strength, but also lightweight. So you're already seeing some lightweight efforts in here, but you're also seeing a performance piece that you don't always see, which is something that I really recommend. Let's see if we can zoom right into this. That right there is a steering damper. So you have a steering damper right in here sort of below everything out of the way a lot of times they put it up near the handlebars there but this is nice sort of out of the way and again anytime you have a bike that can lift the wheel off the ground you can come down and kind of get squirrely that kind of thing or a wheel that can make the a bike that can make the front wheel light steering damper says hey I'm all about performance you can I can handle this high speed so this is a bike that can absolutely go to the racetrack that can absolutely handle the type of riding that you want to do with it it's designed for it all right, let's take a look now at what we have sort of in the main piece of this bike here. Obviously tank up high, and you've got this parallel twin engine. Now, because it's a parallel twin, not something like a four cylinder or a three cylinder or anything else, it's a very compact design by nature. You can just make them very compact. So this is not a large engine. Traditionally, parallel twins are popular in entry level bikes, in sort of mainstream bikes. But again, this one's tuned right up for performance. And again, it's bored out, stroked out from the 790 and also higher compression ratio. So you're really making great power in this very compact engine. You have exhaust that comes up high here. Traditionally, they do that with dirt bikes. It's partly about style, but it's partly about, you know, just sort of keeping weight in nice and tight. Um, you know, everything sort of heavy is down here and centralized. You still have decent ground clearance here, in my opinion, uh, for a road bike here. And again, lightweight uh, sort of aluminum or steel um, pieces in, in here for your shifter. You do have rubber pads there, and you can see on the rubber pads, they are tilted forward. So again, your feet are facing forward here for that compact uh, geometry. Your fork or your uh, shock back here is kind of hidden behind the exhaust from this side, but again, a long uh, shock there that's gonna give you a lot of uh, travel, a lot of precision in their travel, and then a really unique swing arm here that they just show off, which you can just sort of see, looks like a truss on a building. Very lightweight, but also very, very strong. Coming to the far back, here let's just see if you can see the wheel yes you can see the wheel brembo brakes in the rear as well a lot of bikes will put brembos in the front but only the serious ones will put brembos in the back as well of course abs front and rear we can talk about that abs as we go through a little further those uh, power cup tires back here again nice and wide let me just see the width here if i can find it i believe it is a 180 just by looking at it can't see on this side let me see if i can find it on this side here i will take a look for you and let you know in the very next uh, clip all right, we're gonna take a look at the front here. That was a 180 series tire in the back there, 120, so typical race bike style size out front and the wider of the tires that you would expect on the rear. Let's take a look at overall here, the KTM lighting here. Now, again, when you don't start the engine up, you just have this daytime running light. This is sort of like that insect looking light there. What's cool about it is the whole area is really compact here. So again, from the driver's area, no big fairing. The bike looks light and it feels light. And, uh, you know, sometimes those fairings don't weigh a lot, but they give the illusion of a lot of bike 
lake around you. This gives you the illusion of just nothing but openness around you. And in fact, you can see the front tire from the driver's uh, environment here, which is kind of cool. So show you those front lights there. We will show you the signal lights as well. Not LED signals. I thought it would have LED signal lights on this class of bike, but again, you have this for a very good price point. They put the money where it matters on a bike like this. And let's talk about that as we move away to the dash here. All right, take a look at the dash here. You do have the option with a handlebar and not clip-ons uh, to allow you to uh, sort of put whatever kind of accessory you want up here. I should show you the suspension in a second. We'll do that after we take a look at the dash. It has some quick, uh, you can adjust everything by hand or at least uh, both sides up here by hand instead of tools, which is kind of cool. Again, just sort of fits the character of the bike. Turn on a KTM and you see ready to race, which is pretty cool here. I don't know if you can see that there. Again, some of the bright white as the camera just film or screens are always really hard to film, uh, but you'll see here that this is uh, not really an issue at all here. So. What we have here, or not really an issue to see in person is what I'm getting at. So what you have here is temperature gauge and fuel gauge all on the right side here. Speedometer nice and clear. You've got your range, which is about 60 kilometers or so based on a trip of one kilometer. So again, this will calculate how you do things. You've got the outside temperature. You've got trip one, uh, which is one kilometer. You've got the time. ABS is set to road. We're gonna show you that uh, setting in there. You've got your warning lights up the side, warning lights over here. And again, big shift. Uh, uh, number there. Now, what's interesting about this bike is you can set it up for like a MotoGP racing. So traditionally, it's one down and five up, or sorry, uh, yeah, five up. You can reverse that essentially. So it's um, if you are going in tight corners, you can upshift out of corners by not having to put your toe below, uh, below that. So that is an option. The other option is to essentially chip this bike through KTM's accessories to do a number of accessories to add features and that kind of thing. But we're showing you this just as it comes from the showroom. That's probably another video. So let's go into a couple of the settings in here just to show you what you've got here. So what I want to show you is just the ride mode here. We can go over here. You have sport, street, or rain. So you can customize these things up. And these are going to take care of your traction control, your ABS those kind of things, um, but also the power settings and that kind of thing. So we're going to leave it in that sports setting there. We're going to go back and you can go down here to motorcycle, for instance, and there's lots of options in here as well. Traction control there. So we'll just uh, set that for a second. Um, you can turn it to on or off, I believe. Let me just see if I can set it there. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. So we'll play with that a little bit later. ABS mode. Let's go ahead and select that one. You have supermoto or you have ABS. Uh, Supermoto or road. So again, changing your ABS there. Again, hopefully you can see that there. Let's just sort of zoom in a little closer there. Uh, there we go. So you can see that road. And then the shift light down here, you can sort of customize that up as well. And which it says, shift light menu is not available below a thousand kilometers. And that's just because this car, this bike has to be broken in first. So we're going to go back out of that. Uh, we'll keep everything on the road. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so those are some of the settings in there. Let's just zoom a little bit back out to there so you can see it all. Very clear dash again, very, very black in person. It sort of shows a little more bluey on camera, I think, but very clear. Not particularly large, probably about a four inch screen if I had to guess, but well laid out, very easy to read. And again, on this bike, it's quite close to the rider. So that makes it feel larger than it is. Something like a Suzuki has a larger screen, but sometimes they are further away. Uh, so you do have that uh, there. Let's take a look at the suspension and then let's wrap up. Oh, actually we won't wrap up. We'll show you controls as well. And then we'll wrap up by talking about who this bike is for and how it's kind of designed to perform. All right, I hope you can sort of see where I am. This is the headlight here. We're looking at the front side of the bike and this is the top of the suspension, the fork tube there. There's one over here as well, which is red. This one's white. This one is adjustable compression. That's adjustable rebound. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it all the way in. So again, because it is it's sort of hidden behind the wires or the uh, cables and stuff here, you can turn it by hand quite easily. Most bikes that have adjustable suspension, you need a tool or you need some sort of you know way to do that. This can literally be adjusted on the fly. I wouldn't suggest just doing it while you're riding, but in theory you could. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely do this when you pull over for a second, get it all adjusted up. So rebound on the far side, compression on this side, right at the top of the fork tubes, no tools at all, which again goes to the playfulness and customizability of this bike to make it what you want for that ride, for that racetrack, for that road, for that hour, for that half hour, for those 10 minutes. You can just adjust it all up, super simple. Take a look at the controls here. You have typical stuff here. So you can push that on, pull this back and flash for your high beams headlights. So push it on for high beams. There's your regular lights and then flash that high beam just like that. Now we've been looking at a lot of Suzuki's, some of which have smaller buttons than this. This is a little bit bigger button. It's a tiny bit more of a reach, but it does give you a little bit more spaced out area. Again, very easily reachable from the handlebars. So not a big deal, but good large buttons. Signal lights here. Of course you got the typical controls there and horn down low, no hazard warning light on this bike. So that's one thing I would 
would like to see. I don't think it really matters that much, but uh, it does not have one. So horn down uh, low here and uh, uh, signals right there. Let's switch to the other side. We'll just show you that side real quick and we'll get going. Over on the throttle side, a nice, good feeling throttle, really smooth, uh, you know, no play there really. And then you've got your kill switch here and that of course is also your start switch so you can tap that down to start it as well. Brake levers for me would be a little bit of adjustment uh, for me, but again, quality brake levers on those Brembo brakes, uh, really nice stuff there. So let's talk about who this bike is for, because in the mainstream manufacturers, there's not a ton of competition for something like this. So the 790 below it, again, the standard engine, is really a bike that kind of does everything this bike does, but like they say, this is turned up to 11. So if you want something that sort of has this concept, but maybe a little bit more comfortable, a little bit less aggressive, that's the one to go with. A little bit more manageable, but still a ton of fun. This one turns the fun up to a level of experience of, hey, I want to go to the racetrack. I want to do wheelies a lot more often. I want to do those kind of things. Uh, the more compact riding position, the raised, uh, raised pegs over here are going to allow you to go on the racetrack out with those super bikes and keep up with them. The fact that this is such a lightweight and narrow bike makes it really flickable and having that extra power means you can come out of corners, come out of corners early and hard with the good tires, the good setup, the good ge geometry of this whole bike. And that's really what this is. It's a 790 for people who really want to perform and have a lot more fun at higher speeds. The 790 can basically have the same kind of fun as this, but this one takes it up to a level of speed and again, safety with that speed, the whole thing's designed for that, that a 790 can't offer. I really love that it's a parallel twin that keeps that bike narrow. That kind of makes it unique in its class um, for that parallel twin, that lightweight narrowness. It also keeps the price down. Parallel twins are relatively inexpensive to make compared to just about every other kind of uh, engine out there. And that means you get a whole lot of performance in a pretty affordable package. And you basically have something that's super bike-like without having to be super bike like you know it doesn't have that fairing it doesn't have quite the same riding position uh, it looks different it feels different but it will absolutely give you the performance and that's what makes this cool is it a bike for me probably not this is well beyond the performance that i would need i like to have something that's great on the street but i don't need to go to the track but i think for the right person this is exactly what they're asking for something that dials it up to 11 like they say i think i have to agree with that um, ktm marketing statement it is not something that is you know 200 horsepower but it is something that has incredible power from what it is makes it absolutely fun to drive and again great tires great brakes great steering with the steering damper everything else even the, the electronics in this, we haven't dug into all of that in this because I didn't want to bore you too much, but if you need to know more, let me know. This one's all dialed up to give you the type of performance that you would want on a naked bike that gives you a little bit more sporty position, sporty handling. So, very cool bike, very fun bike. Not for everybody, but definitely for people looking for great performance. And that's what this bike's all about. So I want to thank McLean Sports for giving me complete access to their product line. If you have questions that I didn't answer, make sure you let me know in the comments below. And if you want to come see this bike, connect through the link in the description of this video to McLean Sports. They will show it to you. They will talk about all the stuff they have. This is the 2023 model. 2024s will be arriving soon. I'll be filming them when they come. So make sure you tune in for those. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks everybody for watching.